You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, one of the ways for Americans to actually build wealth in this country is through home ownership. And the black home ownership rate stands today, folks, at 40.6%. That is the lowest number in more than 50 years. In comparison, the home ownership rate for non-Hispanic whites reported by the U.S. Census Bureau is 73.1%. That represents more than a 30 percentage point difference and reflects the economic mountain African Americans have, have to climb to gain parity in achieving the American dream. We're joined now by the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, newly elected president, Donnell Williams, to discuss this, this, this disparity. And Donnell, glad to have you on the show. First and foremost, uh, let's just be real. The housing crisis that took place since 2007 caused black folks to lose 53% of, of all black wealth. And when you look at what took place forcing African Americans into subprime loans, uh, the foreclosures, of course, and, and uh, folks having to have, go from owning to renting, that is the biggest contributor in terms of why we are where we are today. And the reality is, and look, I don't care what anybody says out there, I was critical when it actually happened. The Obama administration did not do enough to deal with this issue of the home ownership crisis. I was covering it every step of the way. In fact, I've covered housing my entire career, going back to when I was in Austin at the Austin American Statesman in Fort Worth as a city hall reporter at the Fort Worth Star Telegram and other places as well. And now you have the Trump administration and same thing, having no real substantive plan to deal with the housing crisis in this country, especially as it relates to African Americans. I, I agree with you, Roland. Uh, I remember uh, back in 2012 when I m first met you, and we had this discussion then. But you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, I declared a cease and desist on the declining rates of black home ownership. Right now, we're at 40.6%, which is unheard of. It is hurting our generational wealth. It's hurting um, our economic growth. It, we're in trouble. And that's why I declared a war on the declining rates of black home ownership. Um, we need to pull out all stops. We need to create allies. We need to create partnerships. We need to address this issue immediately. There is no time to, to wait on the sidelines. Everybody's got to be in this fight for black home ownership. And, and so, so what can be done? What should be done? What should Fannie Mae and Freddie Mae, what should they be doing? Well, we're at... Um, <clears throat> now with the association, which is the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, where we have come up with solutions to actually help the, uh, the declining rate. Right now, there are 1.7 million black millennials, low-hanging fruit, that make over $100,000 a year that do not own a home. We're looking at uh, educating them, giving them the tools, the resources, helping them to uh, empower themselves and mobilize so that we have a new growth, a new growth spurt of homeowners uh, coming up. We started a campaign under our two million and five new black homeowners in five years campaign called HouseThenTheCar.com. HouseThenTheCar.com. That's where we're pushing our people. We're trying to get them ready, get them to understand DTI, get them to understand creating a budget, get them to understand credit, down payment assistance, and what have you, so that maybe we, we begin that, that, that turn, because you're in violation if you have a landlord and a Land Rover. All right, I know our panel has some questions for you. Uh, who's first okay. up? Uh, I'll go. I, I think this is a really interesting issue. As a homeowner who became a homeowner late in my life, right, in my in my 30s, um, I found the process really overwhelming. But one of the things I've been thinking about now that I'm no longer a first-time buyer, what exists for that buyer in the middle who's not a first-time buyer, who maybe is a move-up buyer, right, whose family is expanding or whose needs have changed? How do you help those folks uh, retain ownership of what they may currently have and then also purchase something else that may suit their life at that point in their life? Well, we have an entire series to help people in that category because, interesting enough, the average age of a black homeowner is 48 years old. Home wow. purchasers, 48 years old. We, we all on this panel understand that that's a little mm -hmm. too late. We need to start earlier. 
but we have a series of classes to educate people on how they bequeath, how they transfer that wealth once they own it. We don't want to lose the wealth because the a average age of uh, folks born before 1965, half of the black people owned their home before they were 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Now that number has totally reversed. Now we don't own mm -hmm. our homes. So we're trying to show that entire generation, the baby boomers, if you call them, the baby boomers, how to transfer that wealth mm -hmm. and how to do it smartly. Mm -hmm. The people that I talk to in the community often don't know what the specific benefits are of home ownership because if, if they have an apartment or they have a place to live and they got the Range Rover, they figure they're hooked up. I think it might be a good idea to specifically break down what the benefits are of home ownership. And I also want to know specifically what you meant because I think other people want to know the same thing is what does it mean that we're in trouble? So that's two questions. What are the, what are the elements of that in troubleness and what are the benefits of home ownership? Okay. Uh, benefits of home ownership. Um, generational wealth security, financial security. Owning a home is the keystone of financial wealth. That's the, that's the first step for most of America. They came up with the American dream. This is the, the American dream is owning a home. They've been giving away land since, since the beginning, since we got here. So what I'm saying is that the, mm -hmm. the, the keystone is, is owning that property. So owning that property then creates the opportunity to to build, um, uh, to get a job, get a, a business loan, to actually put your kids to college. All of those things, generational wealth, um, all of those things fall into owning that first home, creating that equity. So, so, allow, so allow me to also jump in here. I, uh, one second, one second. Allow me to jump in here mm -hmm. uh, because I think it, uh, to, to also provide some context to that answer to, to the question Cleo just asked. When you talk about uh, what is the benefits in 2014 when the Wall Street Journal did their article on uh, the fact that $23.09 billion in small business loans were handed out in 2013. Black folks only got $385 million of those loans. One of the primary reasons was because of the loss of home ownership. For African Americans, when it comes to if you're starting a business and you're looking to go get capital, you're looking to get a loan, right. your, big, your most important collateral is likely going to be your home, the equity in your home. If you are renting, you don't have any equity. Here's the second thing. Uh, when you talk about uh, security, uh, when my parents retired more than 10 years ago, they were living in an apartment in Houston, uh, and they were looking at fixed income, and they said, we're going to get a smaller apartment. I'm going, it's going to be smaller than this. Well, I still own my home in the Dallas area. I said, my house paid for. Y'all can live there. They, so they were able to move. So, he, so I, have a, I, have a, I have parents and a sister and her daughter both living in a home that's paid for. Now, that actually wow. assists them in terms of the ability to be able to live and not actually have to spend uh, that amount of money. <laughs> Third thing, which is also critically important, when you talk about uh, home ownership, I bought that home in 1999, uh, and it was around $122,000. The last, we, of course, we had the housing crisis where it dropped. Now that house is been, that house is appraised at around $190,000. I've been having folks sending me text messages and calling me for the past six months trying sure. to actually buy the home. Why? Because because the housing stock in the country uh, you don't have uh, as much as you did before, and so. Here it is. I could, if I wanted to, could sell that home right now for $190,000 or $200,000 uh, and then be able to invest that money. And so if you're renting, you can't do that. You're just shelling out money to somebody else. And so I think, and so for the people who are out there, uh, that's what you're talking about. And in fact, the other problem is when you talk about renting, because of the housing, the lack of housing in this country, one of the things that happened, Danielle, you can, and, and, and you know this, what happened was when those banks, when the so-called toxic assets, that actually, that was, those were those home loans. And what they did was they got the federal government to give them that bill, that $12 billion bailout. They took that money and didn't focus on toxic loans. Right. They basically uh, built up their bottom lines. Right. Then they went, wait a minute, uh -huh. we're in good shape. We're not going to get rid of those homes. So what do they do? They then turned around, sold those homes, blocks of 25 and 30,000 homes to hedge funds in Arizona, uh, out California, in Texas. And now, if you, Dr. Carter made her point, if you wanted to buy a home, 
you looking to go buy a home, you can't compete against the hedge fund, so they're forcing people to be renters, and people are actually spending more money right now in many places renting an apartment or renting a home than what the mortgage would actually cost them. And that, Danelle, is the problem that we're seeing in terms of why this is a huge issue. And so shelling out money renting doesn't get you anything when you're 25 and 30 and 35 and 40. And so guess what? When you get to be 50 like I am, you're not going to have any asset whatsoever. And then if I choose to retire, let's, let's say in 20 years from now, go back to that same home, all I got to do is pay my property taxes. That's it. Not a mortgage. Correct. The funny thing about it is they want to push us towards renting, but the, the, the rental price is going up just as much as the home ownership, the mortgage amount that you would pay. Mm -hmm. So we're in betwixt and between, but we have to get into the mindset. At the Congressional Black Caucus, we did a national, I did it, put on a national conversation on black home ownership. That needs to be done in every local, uh, every local city that we have, that we have a chapter in. The national conversation on black home ownership. It's time for us to change the conversation, and we have to get people on board with this. Because the security comes, I have a saying, the, the one who owns the land makes the laws. So we have to change that. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, Kelly, you have a question? I do. Um... I definitely understand the predicament that we're in in terms of home ownership, but as someone who would be a first-time home buyer, a large problem is the gentrification and the influx of prices, especially in the DMV area. So how do you reconcile that mm. with, like, for instance, in my situation, you know, I'm a recent grad, loads of debt, you know, trying to stay afloat. I have... I'm living in D.C. The housing market here is absolutely crazy in terms of prices. So what do you do or how do you reconcile the predicament of gentrification, the influx of prices, um, and the lack of affordable housing with the fact that we need to own homes? Well, I'll tell you, we have to... You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to use the tools that are out there. There are tools out there now. Uh, HUD tried to stop some of them with down payment assistance. We are proponents. We, 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 we believe in the down payment assistance. Uh, if you're patient enough, then something may come up if you're working with a real TIST mm -hmm. and they can help you find. And real TIST is a member of my organization, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, held to a high standard of ethics. So that would, uh, that may help you with gentrification, that may help you find a, a place where you want to be in the, in the town, in the area, in the zip codes you want to be at, closer to jobs, closer to schools, closer to hospitals and doctors and medical and things like that. But um, it's gonna, it could be a hard fit. I'm finding that we're having a hard fit. People can't live in the same area they grew up in anymore. Yeah. So I mean, you have to be patient. You have to save, you have to, and got when it. it's time to strike, you got to move. Well, and I have a suggestion that I also have. All right, folks, I, uh, real quick, Leo, real quick. You can also consider, you gotta, this takes patience, buying property outside of the area, in a, in a nice area outside the area that costs lower, just to establish own, home ownership and, and, uh, and establish that loan, if you will, or however you're going to secure it, so you can have that in your portfolio. And then you build an equity. And, you're, and you also can buy a property. I only buy properties that somebody's going to rent if I move out because it's in a nice area that they're going to like. Mm -hmm. So buy a property that you know is going to be temporary for you, but that's in a rentable area that's outside of D.C. that's, that's more cost effective mm -hmm. and plan to use that property, particularly when you get, when you get the equity and the, and the kind of situation financials you want to be in to get a property later in, in Washington, D.C. Sure. But at least you own property now. Got it. And you got that Denial process 30 seconds. Danelle, 30 seconds, go. We need you to get on board with HousedInTheCar.com. It's a campaign, it's a movement. We have MOUs with everyone from fraternities, sororities, faith-based institutions. The civic engagement piece with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers is going to be huge. We need you to identify with it. We need you to get on board, and black home ownership matters. All right, Danelle Williams, we appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right, All right. folks, back to our Mark Unto video in just one moment.
folks, that's my frat brother, Gerald Albright, on the saxophone there. He is going to be one of the many folks at the second annual Life Lux Jazz Experience taking place in Cabo, November 7th through the 11th. I'll be broadcasting Roller Martin Unfiltered that Thursday and Friday, the 7th and the 8th there. But it's unbelievable. Three days of crazy concerts, folks. Uh, you have the opportunity, if you can't go, first of all, if you want to go, you can get a package. Go to lifeluxjazz.com, L-I-F-E-L-U-X-E-J-A-Z-Z.com. But if you can't go, you can still be there by virtue of the live stream. That's right. Get a live streaming pass for $10.99. You get to stream all three days of concerts uh, from these amazing artists. As I said, uh, Gerald Albright also will be there. Alex Bunyong, Raul Madan, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Kirk Whalem, Average White Band, Donnie McClurkin, Shalea, Roy Ayers, Tom Brown, Ronnie Laws, and Ernest Quarles. All you got to do is go to G. FNTV.com. That's GFNTV.com to get your live streaming pass. We want you to do that, folks. It is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a great three days. And so I'm certainly looking forward to it. And I want you to be there either in person or via the live stream on GFNTV.com. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. <laughs> Thank you.